80% of my work is on faking the fake, taking someone that looks like, oh my God, what happened, to back to normal. That's powerful. Let's look at some things. This is a Hispanic woman in her 50s, had over-resected brows, eyelids, lower eyelids, everything sucked out of her. She couldn't even recognize herself anymore. If you want to listen to her testimonial in Spanish, it's on my website. I've got hundreds of video testimonials and videos. If you look at her, it's not a perfect result. Remember, the lines don't disappear with fat but it's a volume contour of the eye. I reframed it, I brought back, and now she has her identity back to her. This lady on the left had everything pulled out of her eyes, hollow and pulled down with rounding. The eyelid position's even improved. After, this is, this is an interesting story, she's from California. She came to me one year and two weeks out, this is exactly a little over a year. She came to me after I fixed her by volumizing her, and she said, Doctor, I really want to get a good comparison between the before and after, so I'm going to come in with no makeup on the after. So, and I, if you want to look at how consistent my photographs are, I have a whole page of describing how I maintain consistency in photographs. And that amount of light that hits that face makes her look rested and balanced. Now, here's a trick. This lady, I didn't actually fill her brows. I only filled the lower face because her brows were sticking out about half an inch forward. And Constance, who's, who works with me, my patient care coordinator, says, Dr. Lamb, what are you going to do to make her brows look good? I said, just wait till you come to the recovery room. Well, she came and she goes, oh, her brows look beautiful. What'd you do? And the trick is I did nothing for them. Because if you pull the lower face forward, you draw an alignment with the upper face. So I take thin faces and widen it. I take wide face and I thin them. I bring the face into aesthetic harmony. You have to have a good eye to create this. And so you can see their eyelid position is actually improved. And if you look at a three-quarter view, you can actually see that the brow is in alignment with the cheeks and the lower face. And so now it doesn't look so prominent. Bonuses. These are the little things that may or may not happen. This is a lady that had a bad cheek implant done in Dallas. And I did a flat reconstruction of it. Then I contoured the face with fat to rebalance and sculpt all the areas. And that's what you can do is you don't have to put fat symmetrically. You have to have a good eye on how to balance a face. And that's what I've done to create at least a little bit more also youthfulness, at the same time balancing and correcting a, re a problem. This is a Hispanic lady that actually was abused by her father. This was done as a charity case. And you can see I put it on the top right and the bottom left. Now the face is slightly more balanced. It's not perfect, but it's more balanced. And now she can actually go out in public and not feel ashamed of the abuse she received. Didn't, didn't give, but received. And that's, to me, disgusting. Here's a lady at a year. The wrinkles are better. I didn't do any peels. I didn't do any plasma or laser or light therapy. I just gave her volume. Not perfect, but better. And that to me is exciting. I just saw this lady yesterday and at a year now, this is nine months out, and her acne scars are better. She said, doctor, I want to fix my acne scars and I want to do some uh, youthfulness. So I said, you know what? Being a Korean woman, I just don't want to create a problem with any kind of you know, long-term recoveries for acne scars. So I just did this volume. And now the scars are almost gone. And now I saw it in a year, and they're literally almost gone. I haven't had time to add those photos. Hands. What gives you away? People say, don't make my face look too young, because what's going to give me away? The hands. Well, not anymore. This is all done with fat, no incisions. And there's a study recently that showed that fat got better over one year, two years, five years, and ten years if it's done well. That's another example. So summary. Think of volume. Rethink everything you know. Volume is the cornerstone to aging and reframe the eye. Don't take it away. And finally, create a beautiful shaped face. That is what you see from 30 feet away. So there's a book I wrote last year that came out and talks about how my philosophy on, on fat grafting. And you can get it on Amazon. It's really for surgeons. It's the how to, how to manual, so to speak. So thank you, everyone, and uh, appreciate your attention. Uh, Nina asked me to put a contact information. If you want to learn more about what I can do, just go to lamfacialplastics.com. There's an S at the end. I don't have a B at the end of my name. L-A-M Facial Plastics. That's my email. You can email me. So I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go Thank away. You. Okay. Isn't that wonderful? Did we learn a lot? How many are more interested in this? We're going to have Dr. Lamb back. <laughs> Yes. May I ask you, what kind of fats are you using to fill in? If we run out, I use my own. <laughs> no. That's why I eat a lot of sausages. No, I'm just joking. Basically, what I do is um, I harvest fat from wherever I can get it. And s most, you know, most men only have this area. Sometimes, like I'm doing a very athletic gentleman in about two or three weeks, I'm, doing his, I'm harvesting from the lower back. 
um, for women, it's either their either thigh or their belly. And if I if they are not so heavy and they have some and both, and they need I need either their hands and their face. The hands require a lot of fat. I'll go to all the sites, thighs and belly. But don't expect a contour change. I don't do body work. I only do face. So I just harvest. It's all harvested by hand. So there's no aggressive suctioning with the machine. It's all done by hand harvesting. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Yes. I need to know people that have had anorexia and are Yes. Would you be able to work with them? I, I would say no, and here's the reason why. If you have the, the, the candidates that are not great with fat are the extremes. If they're, if they're temporarily anorexic, remember what I put in there is permanent. If they get heavier, go back to normal, they're going to blow up. If I deal with a woman that's markedly overweight, and what I mean by that is 50 to 75 pounds, if they're within 20 pounds to even high 20s, I'm okay with it, then they're not a good candidate because if they lose it, they're going to lose my fat. If they grow, it's a, it's a live graft. So what I would do for that person is obviously, first of all, probably not touch someone that has a psychological issue. But if they're recovering and they need some help to get where they want to go, I would use temporary fillers. And actually, the way that I do, I, I actually target volume issues, not folds. I target the cheeks and the lower eyelids I actually invented a technique to fill the lower eyelids with wrestling without needles. So I actually fill temporarily to get them to the point where they want to be. And the same token is if someone's slightly overweight and they need to lose a weight, I want to watch them during a, a period of stability. So as they get into the 20 to 30 pound weight range, I will then, um, I will, be, before they get to that 20, 30 pound weight range, I will actually treat them with, with temporary fillers until they get there. Do they have to have a consultation? Yeah, I actually have an online virtual consultation where I can do real-time uh, photos exchange and discussion. I did that for a gentleman from Rome about last week, so that's another way. I honestly prefer to meet people because I think it's, there's no, no substitute for talking face-to-face, -face, looking photographs, but I can do almost everything through a virtual online consultation. It's on the right side of my website called Online Virtual Consultation. Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Yes. How long does the procedure last? It is permanent. Now, remember a couple things. If someone is over 65, 70, or smoker, there can be some areas where it's not going to be holding 100%. I would say about 90% of my patients I don't need a touch-up, and probably even more than that. But occasionally I see a patient that needs a touch-up, and I usually do that at one year, because remember, you go through a period of swelling where it looks really good and maybe not so good, then you dip at three months where it looks pretty good but not great, then it looks fantastic as you go six months to a year up. So I usually don't want to rush in there and fill it. I have a gentleman where at six months I am going to do a touch-up on, I rarely do touch-ups, but he had head and neck cancer and his whole face was collapsed in. At six months I could see he actually needed more on the left. And I decided now I'm really going to put a few drops in the left. Well, that takes me less than 15 minutes with no incisions and a recovery at that point of a weekend. So, you know, if I propose to you that in five to ten years, as you get older, because remember, my grafting, I take fat that's estrogen rich, which you never lose, put it into the face and you don't lose it, but you lose your own natural fat. You continue to lose your own fat. So in five years, you may need a touch-up. And the nice thing about my touch-up, it takes me less than 30 minutes to do it at that point. I have one more question for yes. you. Um, is the price of your procedures comparable to uh, facelift? I, yes, actually my price is within $300 of my facelift, but what's amazing is that for that price, it's $8,600, everything included, you get, um, you get your brows, your eyelid, your cheeks, your jawline, all contoured in one, one shot. So to me it's almost like a good deal, because the, oh, there's, also there's no incisions, but if your neck is hanging, it, it, then you need a facelift. But here's a trick, even if I do a facelift, I would rather, if you had a choice, do the fat grafting in most cases because you look rested. People see this more than they see this. Most women see this to themselves more than they see this. So I want to sort of refocus that because I want you to look rested and youthful and not necessarily fix a neck if that's not the priority, if the money is an issue. Yes? Where are you located? I'm in Dallas, Texas. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to have to ask the other questions to be either emailed to Dr. Lamb or when he comes off stage. I'll be here. Out just to the side of the given room just to come out. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.